tuning. That's kind of figure that I got for just rolling down the river. <laughs> Nature is beautiful and peaceful, and uh, we've got to protect it. This is her voice. She is not like us. She has not one voice, but many. She was here first. We built our cities around her. You may have glimpsed her as you zoom by overhead. This would have been tree-lined and shaded and full of houseboats. But there are those who go beneath the bridges, who want to find out more. And there are those who have always loved her. I got to the camp at Standing Rock for three days and I was an experience that, that changed my life. In a way, and she has many ways. Our story is in hers. You can find yourself here, or here, or here. So let us journey with her and meet some of her friends along the way. You never know what you're gonna find on a river. She would like to make a friend of you. She is water. She is river. She is the Blue River. All this water that rains here, rains over all this area, runs down to the Missouri River and drains. She has beginnings, small beginnings. The water that lands on your concrete, the spring from beneath the white oak. All of it flows and our story begins. There are those who believe it needs to be told. No matter where you are, you're downstream of somebody, and the things that you do here affect people downstream, so there's that circle. Because we believe it's not just about connecting with nature, but it's about connecting with one another. Because it's, it's all interconnected, and that's what we're doing here, is we're connecting the children together and with nature. Woo! Do you know who used to live at this river? Black Bob, have you anybody heard of Black Bob Road? We're down at Brush Creek near Truce, where Truce cross over, and we're gonna try and retrieve uh, one of the little electric scooters. I, as I was riding by on my bicycle the other day, I saw one of those scooters down in the water. And this is actually in the valley of the Blue River, where the headwaters are. This river started by two creeks. Do you guys know what creeks Wolf they Creek were? And Wolf Creek. Coffee Creek and Wolf Creek. The Blue River and its creeks do not conform to the grids of our maps. They are blue veins that should nourish our land. Well, we've, as a family, been involved in cleanups, but just to bring them down, get outside for the day, and to help be shepherds or stewards for this water that, that we all use, or hopefully use. I don't know about this water, but... <laughs> so I grew up going to the Blue River, and what I find interesting is that when I, when I remember my life, 
The memories that are most vivid are at the river and outside in nature. I don't remember playing video games much, and there's something to that. My senses are stimulated. I'm fully alive. My blood's flowing. I'm running. I'm playing. And that's what we provide the kids. You don't have to focus on anything else but having fun. You can get exercise. You can collect things and learn about them. And the sunshine. Like I notice shapes and rocks. I just feel so relaxed and free. I just enjoy being in nature. The river is something that's wise that shows me something that's a spirit to me. Yeah, it's still down there and we can't get it out. We're gonna have to retreat, come back with a bigger hook. In her flow, in her coils and pools, there is life. The seasons impress her a harmony of rhythms, and she drinks deeply. Where would we be without water and her secret generosity? She dances with light. Is it a tippier? Like in my it, it really isn't. That's the nice thing about it is they're so self-balancing. So we're getting ready to put in on the Blue River and take a little kayak ride down the river. I got this last summer when I was um, in Minnesota, so you can take your phone with. We're near my property at the beginning of the Blue River, and it's so exciting because we have this group of amazing environmentalists that are working on protecting the Blue River. Well, we have a friend who has never canoed before, or at least kayaked. She's been in a canoe, so she's a little worried that she doesn't know what she's doing. <laughs> I am nervous, um, mostly because I am not a skilled kayaker, but that's not going to stop me. The Blue River is invisible, and this portion of it in particular is invisible. And much of this land still hasn't been developed, so we still have a chance to save some of these beautiful areas. <laughs> but only if we get going, because development is moving fast. Yikes! Okay, here we go. People love this until it's gone. <laughs> Over 50% of the Blue River's watershed is on the Kansas side of the state line. Rainwater that lands here will eventually flow into it. So we are on Camp Branch, which is a headwater tributary to the Blue River. And the headwaters of the Blue River are on the Kansas side of the state line. The main stem of the Blue River flows into Missouri where it joins the Missouri River. This is a male orange-throated darter. This river is in generally good condition. It has good water quality, good dissolved oxygen levels. We have this rule that the valley rules the stream, and the valley for Camp Branch is generally healthy. Lots of healthy forests, lots of healthy grasslands. The Nature Conservancy and its partners are working with some local landowners to protect these headwaters. But not far from here, the city of Overland Park in Kansas is growing rapidly. And as the ground is sealed off, the earth cannot drink the rainwater and it runs into the rivers. In urban areas, we typically design them to shunt the water out as fast as we can. The water runs over pavement, it runs into the stream much faster, there's nothing to filter it, and in fact, it picks up pollutants and heat from the pavement. It may be that increased runoff is contributing to the erosion of the banks. And you can see along some of the banks here, there's pretty massive erosion going on, and uh, that's kind of a result of development. We have stormwater. These have fallen because of all of the flooding, so the tree roots get exposed because the banks of the river are being eroded. It's nice to be with a group of people who are so animate about protecting the water and nature because we're all going to need that as we go forward. So right behind me is Wolf Creek, and we've just been paddling on Coffee Creek, and they come together or confluence right here, and this is where the Blue River starts. It's right here. For the Native Americans, where two rivers come together is a very important place to pray. They, they would send their prayers down the river, and so it was considered a sacred place. 
The Blue River flows for a little over 40 miles from Kansas into Missouri and through the east side of Kansas City. Along the way, it's fed by creeks such as Indian Creek and Brush Creek, and it all flows into the Missouri River, which started in Montana. For some of its passage through Kansas City, the Blue River runs through publicly owned parks and woods, and it offers adventure. Oh, hey, hey, come here, come here, come here. The grass carp right here. All right, that's what we're gonna be doing today. Is we're gonna be chasing these fish on Indian Creek where it meets the blue. Now these fish are very, very skittish. They require a lot of patience, a lot of time. It'll probably cause you a little frustration too. Yep, they're gone. What can you do? Oh, they're called carp. Common carp is out in the middle tailing. We go on foot. Uh, you're gonna see a whole lot of brush here. We gotta kind of bushwhack through some of this stuff. You coming? <laughs> you know, a lot of people are starting to get into this kind of fly fishing thing. And it, it's usually associated with trout. That being said, anything you can do on a conventional rod, we can do on a fly rod. I don't care if there's an interstate above us. You got beautiful water, crystal clear. Usually you're not getting bugged by people. Uh, some of those trout rivers, you're fishing shoulder to shoulder. <laughs> Went right next to him. He didn't even look at it. Oh, that's a big catfish. What the heck? That's not even a grass carp. <laughs> that's a good fish. All righty, back he goes. Well, it's not what I expected, but I'll take it. We're here at the middle part of the Blue River Trail system. I like doing the dirt because you can just turn yourself inside out and just leave everything on the trail. Total effort and you know go as hard and fast as you can. Oh sh you good? Get out to the Blue River Trails for me from my house or from my work, it's about 20, 25 minutes. And it's pretty awesome to think in that short of a time you can get to an area like this. It's not like you want it to be a, a best kept secret, but at the same time, you know, more people should be experiencing it because it's really beautiful out here. <laughs> Spring. Rains are a good time to get trail work done because it rains a lot and you get a little too wet to ride, so you come out and build trail work, kind of what we're doing today. It's one thing to have good trail that's fun to ride, but it's also, you know, humans are suckers for beauty and views. <laughs> and you get the, some of the best views by the river. But look at that, water's moving fast. And so when we were laying it out, we made sure to get some places where we could get up and see the river. I mean, these woods were so unused before we started building trail in them. Part of my hope is that by building trail, people get back here and have access to the nature. And then, you know, that prevents the county wanting to do something commercial with it because it's a value as, a, as an outdoors activity and green space for people in the city. You know, I think today everything's about, you know, go, 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 and everybody's busy and short-timed. For me especially, uh, nature is kind of my way to, you know, to come out and be at peace with myself and uh, really appreciate the, the world that we live in. Recent research suggests a two-hour dose of nature a week significantly boosts health and well-being. 
It's going great. It just feels so great to be out here. I just, it's amazing. It's not really about the catching. I've gone many, many a day without catching a fish and had the best of times. So it's, it's about just getting out, enjoying nature. I know right now we're kind of in the city, but I could walk half mile that way and you would think we're in Colorado. However, nature is not always allowed to be pristine. All right, so this is just kind of a warning. There's a chemical here, PCB. You don't want to be drinking the water. I know that sounds really obvious, but I see a lot of people doing it. Uh, don't eat the fish out of here. It's catfish, are you kidding me? Probably not a good idea to swim. You know, if you get in the water like we are, you know, we're doing ankle deep stuff, just take a shower, you know? And then it became invasive and just basically kind of gets into everywhere. Every fo forested area is filled with it. Invasive bush honeysuckle is choking the forest. And the trail builders face other challenges. This stuff wasn't here at all, you know, when we laid this out a couple months ago. But you can see someone just came and just flung it right down the hillside. You know, it's just a little defeating. You want to come have fun and build trail and then you got to spend a lot of time picking up trash. The battle against the trash and pollution has gone on for decades. This is the Prospect Bridge near Prospect and Blue River Road in Kansas City, Missouri. And if you look over this bridge, you'll see a flap gate. You can easily see the difference between the water quality coming out of this flap gate and the water quality of the river. And as for you, O oh my flock, does it seem a small thing unto you to have eaten up the good pasture, but you must trample down with your feet the rest of your pastures, and to have drunk of the deep waters, but you must foul the rest of the waters with your feet. And as for my flock, they eat that which you have trampled with your feet, and they drink that which you have fouled with your feet. Are we better off now than we've been? Now that we live behind glass, downstream of the filters, safe on the inside? Isn't it outside where we find fellowship with ourselves, with others, with whatever is at the root of it all? Perhaps it's out here where our better nature lies. The blue is the biggest and the most important of Kansas City's urban rivers because stormwater drains into the blue, carrying all of those pollutants, and one of those pollutants is trash. This is the Blue River Rescue. We do this every year, and uh, literally hundreds and hundreds of people come out and just uh, clean up the park, and there's free donuts and coffee. So if we can have a 1,000 people picking up trash in one day, that makes real gains for that river. When you see people with such beautiful hearts, they, uh, they just come out of the woodwork, and all they care to do is to make the world better. When I was a kid, you know, we were outside all the time, and you know, it's just kids these days don't get an opportunity for that. So for them to be outside, climbing a hill, lifting rocks and getting trash, it's a win-win, both for them and for the river. We don't just want to build empathy between people. We want to build empathy for our planet, for our water systems. If we don't do that, we have no hope. I don't know that anybody's put their canoe in here. There's not an official boat ramp, so we're, we're kind of faking it. The river starts near the Overland Park Arboretum, which is where we were a little bit ago, and it starts to become more and more urban. Here's the zoo. And then if you look, here's the plaza. Brush Creek is one of the main tributaries. And we're right here. Today, we're right where Brush Creek flows into the Blue River. So we want to see what the river looks like here. All right, are you ready? I am not, but I'm going anyway. <laughs> That's right. Okay, here we go. 
At one time, the river here would have flowed through farmland. All right, so this is the confluence of the Brush Creek and Blue River. You know, you're in the city farm at this point. The prison was up on top of the hill, and this was a working farm. And it grew a lot of the food for the city and became the center for where they grew a lot of the products that went into the sea rations during the war. You can't come down here and not have your blood pressure lower. This isn't the beauty of the south side of the river where you have the forest still intact and everything, but there's something about water, bodies of water coming together like this. As the river flows north of here, again, its character has changed and we interact with it differently. This was a giant resort area. And if you were actually in the Northeast, the whole mouth of the river was full of houseboats and fishing. And, and in this area right here, you still had that. But it's just been paved, you know? We paved it and put in a parking lot. In 1970, the city of Kansas City partnered with the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers on a 40-year project to reduce the risk of flooding in Kansas City's industrial Northeast quarter. The project did become greener, but in its early days, cement simply replaced soil and trees. This river doesn't look like much of a river here. It looks like a concrete ditch. And I knew that, but I guess I wasn't prepared for how stark it would be today. I noticed a few little damselflies up on the bank, but they can travel. So they probably came up from the confluence where there's some vegetation. It's just sad. It's just so sad and you wish they could do something about it. And I don't know that we can, at least not for our generation. But the river has friends in high places, and they do want to do something about it. Momentum is building to redevelop the industrial area and for a healthy, accessible river to play its part in attracting residents and businesses. So the river today reflects the end result of the Industrial Revolution our choice to separate ourselves from nature. If we look at this mirror long enough, we start to see the possibility for us to again see ourselves as an active part of nature. And we could envision this as a new kind of economic driver that would be based on what these natural systems offer, which would include, of course, removing all the concrete. I think without any question, this can once again become blue water. The story of the Blue River is still being written, and we don't know yet what the next chapter will be. In its pristine headwaters, in its woods and parks, in its industrialized lower reaches, changes are afoot. And as we write the story of the river, we're also writing our own story, and the stories of those who will come after us. Actually, the thing that inspired me the most was listening to music about rivers. Like, what would be the specific song of the Blue River if the Blue River had a song? You know, all these big signs, Mini Wachoni, you know, the water is life, and it was just like, wow, it's like so beautiful. So today is our fifth annual Martin Luther King Walk. It's a nature walk, and we wanted to plan a special event to honor this great leader. It is a river that is a connection between Missouri and Kansas, and Missouri is notoriously a slave state and Kansas is notoriously a free state. And so it makes you kind of wonder like, how many slaves may have crossed this river into free territory or what songs were sung here? A lot of people don't know the Blue River exists in Kansas City also. So our biggest mission is showing people that the Blue River can be beautiful and it can be exciting and it can be a wonderful place to visit. You know, all these rivers are connected together. As the Native American believed that they're the, the lifeblood of the earth. Sing a slow, shallow dirge, a spirituals of muddy streams, songs of ancient dusky rivers, churning carp on seas of dreams. Sing the same songs sung by solemn travelers of the past, trudging across the River Jordan, hoping to be free at last. We no longer know our rivers. As a people, we are lost. Booming industries of burden, streams no soul can swim across. Pollution of our rivers is connected to our plight, since we too are made of water. Water is our source of life. Reconnect with our great rivers, walk their banks and learn their names. Sing their songs so we'll remember that their life flows through our veins. 
At this very moment, while you're watching this, rivers are flowing. All of them flowing into each other, flowing around us, flowing beneath us, flowing through us, doing their work. They are connectors, and what we do to them reflects us. They want to offer us life. More storms are coming, more flooding, more development, more people. Those things are real and they threaten this river. At some point, we've got to change how we view nature, specifically rivers. <laughs>